Hey guys, in this week's tip, we're going to start a continued series at some first looks at some of the new features of SMS 3.4. Up first, we're going to take a look at one of those things that a lot of people have asked about. How do I add images to the shelf labels that I create in my store? So step number one that we're going to review, we're going to flag items and we're going to print either an icon or an image that we identify within item maintenance. Pretty cool. The next thing we're going to do, well, if you can do one, maybe you want to do several. I'll show you some examples of that and why it might be important in your store. So let's hop into this thing and start learning some new stuff. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at what we're actually going to create today. Now in front of you here is a PDF version of a price label that I created. Now yours are going to be a lot prettier, probably going to have some barcodes and some other information on them. But this will suffice for our needs today. What you can see that's unique about it is that I have an item from my produce department here, Granny Smith Apple, and I've applied this icon here, this image for locally grown. You've probably seen this at maybe some farmers markets or even the other local supermarkets within your area. Now, what we're doing in item maintenance is we're just taking this one graphic and we're flagging it to whatever item it applies to, whether it be a sub, individual items, a group of items, a family of items, it doesn't really matter. What we're going to do today is show you how to take this one image, this one standardized logo, and apply it in item maintenance to this shelf label. Pretty cool stuff. Let's hop over into Pro and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so I hopped over into SMS Pro and I got a basic item cost view set up here. I set the search filter to sub department. I went in and put my produce sub department, which is three in my case. Now the item we're going to work on is this Granny Smith apple. And because the first uh, option we're going to show you is locally grown, I don't want to fib, so I'm going to pick something that's local to me here. Now the rest of this is pretty simple. And as we step through it, you're going to see that you can use all the features of SMS Pro that you're used to, like the apply all feature, by bringing in the items that may be locally grown in this case into the browser. We're going to select the icon or the image, and then you could apply all. That's pretty simple. So where do you do it? Well here, I'll show you. So what we're going to do is use one of the fields in the main item table right over here to help us out. I'm going to go ahead and toggle the view to expand it out so we can see a few more features here. Now the field that we're going to use is right here. It's called this graphic file field. And that's where we're going to tell the system what the name of the icon or the image that we're going to go ahead and associate with this item is. So to do that, all we have to do is type the name of the graphic here. Now before I do that, we're going to go over a few things on these graphic files because it's kind of important. The first thing is, with the current version of SMS Label Maker, we can only use what's called a bitmap file. .bmp is the extension. Now if you're like me, you know that most of the sources that you're going to get these files are either going to be JPEG, and some of the newer stuff is even going to be PNG. It's not BMP. So we got to figure out a way to convert that. So I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to do that, and then we'll come back here to Pro, and I'll show you how to set that part of it up. Now one of the fastest and easiest ways to convert an image from a JPEG that you're probably going to get from your supplier into the bitmap that we need for SMS label is to just use an application that's most likely already installed on your Windows system, Microsoft Paint. Good news is it's easy to use and it's free. So you're going to open up the image that you get from your supplier and then you're going to do what we used to call in the old days a file save as. So we're going to select the file save as and then we're just going to say save this image as a BMP. That's what we need for SMS. And then when you select this option you're going to save it into the directory that I'm going to show you right now. So the folder and the directory that we're going to save these new bitmaps into is pretty intuitive. It's going to be off the root drive probably in some something like a store man folder or something like that. You can see mine is called store man grocery here for my demo. You're going to have some version version of this. So you're going to browse to that folder, then you're going to go to the bitmaps folder, and that's where you're going to save the image. Now you can see this is all the images of the system, from your flip charts to your signs to everything else. It's all right here. Pretty easy to find and simple to use. Now I went ahead and saved mine, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight this image and hit L on my keyboard to come down, because I called it locally grown. It's easy for me to remember. Now, you'll want to name it something like that so that you can remember when we get back into SMS Pro what it was. So again, locally grown is our name for here for our demo. Now, another thing you'll want to look at here, it's kind of hard for me to point, I think, at this, but you see when, I, when the uh, properties comes up, the size of the image is kind of important too. You can see third line down, dimensions of this particular image, 80 by 110. Now, depending on your label size, you may have to adjust that some. That's easily done, too, in Microsoft Paint. You just got to drag and drop a little bit on the image corners, and you can set that size to whatever the heck it is you want. All right, so let's hop back, hop back over into Pro and finish this baby up. All right, so I'm back in Pro. Now, all we have to do is go to our main item table, and we can expand it if the fields aren't visible, come to our graphic file field, insert the cursor, and then type in the name of the file that we just created, the name of the image we just made. Now, notice here, there is not going to be a .bmp or any extension. SMS already knows that it's a BMP file, so just type in whatever you name the image right here and apply those changes. 
from an SMS Pro perspective, at the item level, we're in good shape. One thing we have to do, though, is we have to utilize one of the new label templates that's going to be offered in SMS 3.4 and the latest version of 3.3 as well. And we have to tell it that we want the label to print this field right here on the label to go actually fetch this image and print that on the label. Let's show you how to do that. All right, so the last step in this process in order to get this label to work is to actually go into the label template that we assign to our Granny Smith item here and tell the system that we want the label to print this image, to go fetch it and print this image every time we print this price label. Now, I'm probably going to get yelled at for showing you guys this, so stick up for me when I do. So the way we get to it, we go to the Execute menu, Edit Label Templates, and then when we select that, the Label Template Editor is going to pop up. This is the label designer that's included in SMS. Now there is an art to this, so don't go in here and mess stuff around and start deleting and pulling and dragging because this is an art for sure. Uh, what we're going to do for this particular one though is use a template that's already set up and will be supplied with SMS 3.4 and a new version of 3.3. Now you can see the name of the template right up here. I have no idea what it stands for, so please don't ask. All I can tell you is this is the name of the template that we want to start with. Now to make this thing simple, what I'm going to do is delete a couple fields on here because we're going to talk about them in a future video. I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to delete that one. Don't worry about what they were. We'll get back to it. This is the base template that we want to use right now. We've got a background image with a pot of gold because what I'm going to show you today is going to make you so much money you can fill up this pot of gold. So all we have to do is now file just like we did before, save as, and rename this template so we don't screw up the original one. Pretty simple stuff that we can do right there. Okay, so once we rename this template, we're pretty safe because if we screw it up, we can always go back to the original. Now what we're going to work on is this little field, this placeholder or box right here. If we click on it, we see it's no different than any other placeholder or field on the label. It's just a spot where we're going to put some information. Now we have to step back for a second and explain a little bit of how SMS Label Designer works. In this case, we're trying to print an image on a label that meets certain criteria. That's easy enough. The way SMS Label Designer works is if you want to print an image, you always have to print an image. So what does that mean? Well, even on items that aren't locally grown, you've got to print some sort of image. That's just the way the system works. You have to digress a bit back to uh, maybe the mid-90s when we had Microsoft Access and, and working with Excel and things like that with if, then, else. That else part of the statement can't be null. What that means, it can't be blank. There has to be something to fill this space. So all we have to do is have a standard image, maybe your, your store logo or, or maybe some other sort of image, or if you had an enterprising young man on staff, he could create a bitmap that is perfectly white assuming the background of your label is going to be white. If it's white on white, nothing will print. It will just be blank, but that placeholder will be there. You will want to save that placeholder image in the bitmap directory of the storeman directory as well on the system. All right, so this next step is where it can get kind of goofy. So just pay attention here, and let's go back to the analogy of an if-then-else statement. Remember what we're doing. If a criteria is met, display the image that we want on the label. If the criteria is not met, display a different image, a blank image, a white image, a store logo image, whatever it may be, if then else. If you can remember that, I think this will make this a bit easier for you to understand. Okay, so put your thinking cap on for just a second. This can get kind of complicated, but it really isn't. We're going to break it down into the simplest forms, and I think you're going to be able to get a handle on this. Now, this script line right here, this is what's going to come standard out of the box with this label template that we set up. We're going to have to adjust it a little bit, but what, before we do that, I'm going to make sure that everybody understands it. Don't worry about all the Greek letters and all this stuff that you, makes no sense. Don't worry about that. There are three components that we have to worry about and only two that we need to change. Now, the first component that we need to worry about, the if part of the statement. Remember, if, then, else analogy, this is the if. Everything before these two carrots out here is the if. If this criteria is met, do this print this particular image, logo, whatever, the one that we're putting over here. So if this criteria is met, print this image right here. See the BMP format? We're actually calling the graphic file field that we input back in Pro on the main item table. That's what we're calling here. So if it's met, print this. If this criteria is not met, print a different image on the label, a different logo. That's what we're showing out here. All it is. Forget about all the Greek stuff. It's not that complicated and it's not that hard. The one piece that we have to worry about is the SIL field right here. F01, that's what that is. That's a SIL field. I forget what it is. It doesn't really matter. This is the SIL field that we're calling on this particular script for this box over here. 
All we have to do is change it from the F01 sill field to the field that corresponds to the graphic file that we just input. I'm going to show you how to find that real simple, then we'll hop back here and change this baby. Okay, so I hop back into Pro. I got the main item table set up just like we did before. Now we have to figure out what the sill field is for the graphic file that we put right down here. The easiest way to do it, and the way I was taught, put the cursor into the field graphic file, just like that. Then come up to the search criteria in the filter, hit the down arrow, come all the way to the bottom and you can see right here this is the sill field that corresponds to that particular box back here on the main item table it's sill field f1119 that's what that field is and that's the number we need to write down and hop back over into the label maker which we're going to do right now so we're back to the label maker and all we have to do is adjust the sill field that we're calling on in this default script now remember, out of the box, it was calling on Sillfield F01, which is UPC. I went and looked that up. Sorry, I didn't remember it. That's what that is. We don't want this script to call on the UPC field. We want it to call on the graphic file field, the one that we just looked up, F1119. So what do you think we do? We just tell the system, don't look at F01 and print out F01. Look at F1119 and print out F1119. To do that, select the script here, come up to the editor, double click in to put your cursor, Scroll over with your arrows to 01, delete that out, and it's F1119. So anytime there is a criteria that is met in that particular graphic file field, F1119, print out that criteria, F1119, the bitmap that we saved, or if that criteria isn't met, print out the default, in my case, department0.bmp. Apply that change, and we just completed our first SMS script. You ought to be proud of yourself. Now before you leave here, make sure you save the label template so that everything will be saved and ready to go. Let's hop back over to Pro and print this label out. So we're back in Pro and I'm going to go ahead and open up my utilities menu so we can go ahead and print an instant label here. Now as a quick review before we print this label, we have our Granny Smith Apple. We told the system in the graphic file field at Sillfield F1119 that this is the file that we want to look up. That is stored in the bitmap directory off our storeman folder on the root drive. If the criteria is met and there is a uh, field in here that matches with an image locally grown, print it on the label. That's what we're doing. So all we have to do, tell it what label template to print on, pick yours out from the list, tell it the source price, launch the baby, the print job is done, go into the label section, print the label, you can see it's showing up right here. Now I'm going to print to a PDF, I don't know how quick this is going to come about, but it went ahead and printed that label off, I answered OK, I'm going to come and I'm going to save it as label, yep, we'll go ahead and replace it. Everything is done, and I'm going to open up my PDF and show you. Look at that. We did this together. Our item, our nice-looking little graphic for locally grown, all on the label. Pretty cool stuff. Now, there's one other step I'm going to show you, and then we're done for this week. All right, so this last bit, we're going to go rather quickly because it's really replicating what we've already done, and we already learned how to do this stuff. If you remember back to our objectives early on, we had two. One was to print an icon or a graphic of some sort on our label by a field that was flagged in item maintenance. We now know how to do that. The second objective, well, what if I had multiple icons or multiple images? Here, let me give you an example. Same item, Granny Smith Apple. This time, it's locally grown, which we know, and it's also certified USDA organic, or maybe non-GMO, or gluten-free, or made in the USA, or whatever one of the monikers that you want to put on your price label. If you can get the official little graphic image, convert it to a BMP, which we know how to do, you can put these on the label as many as you want, so long as it looks halfway decent and you got room. Now I'm going to show you how to do this, but one thing I'll have to caution you on. This one isn't sanctioned, so shh, don't tell anybody. All right, so to have multiple icons on the label, it's the exact same process. All you have to do is pick another sill field in your main item table that you aren't utilizing today. The one I'm going to pick is the alternate brand long description right here. I'm not using it and I can utilize that space for this particular need that I have. Now I already know how to do this. I'm going to go ahead and put my cursor in the alternate brand long description here, come up to the filter, and I'm going to see that the sill field is F1942. Easy enough to remember. So now I'm going to come back to alternate brand long description. I'm going to go ahead and say that if I have a graphic file labeled USDA organic in my bitmap folder go ahead and print that graphic on the label 
So this part of it's done. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now we're going to hop over into the label maker and I'll show you how to make that final adjustment. So we're back in the label maker and all I have to do is add a second image field. How do I know that what we were working on before was an image field? Well, it tells me right here in the property box, image one. See, if I were to go up here and highlight the, the actual text, it would tell me text area one. So I know I need to add another image field. To do that, come up here to fill fields, image field, and it's going to add it. I'm going to drag the properties box out of the way a little bit here. We're going to drag this image that we just added down here, and you're going to have to resize these. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this video making this thing look pretty. We have two image fields. We've got this one, and we've got this one. Now, all we have to do is come back to our original image field, go to the script that we did together, go up to uh, the section where we can edit it, Alt-C to copy it because I'm too lazy to write it down, come back to the image that we just added, go into the file name field, put our cursor up here in the editor, Alt-V to go ahead and apply that or paste that script in there. Then all we have to do, just like before, come over here and adjust the sill field. What was it? It was 1942. Anytime there's something in field, cell field 1942 that matches an image that's stored in my bitmap directory and it's named the same, print it on the label, just like this. That's pretty easy to do. We apply the change and you're ready to go. Pretty darn cool stuff. When you print this label out, it's going to look something like this. You're just going to have to pretty it up a little bit. Well, with both objectives met, that's it for this week's tip. Hopefully we've given you a couple ideas of how you can pretty up those shelf labels within your own store environment. And I'm hoping this will give you a good reason to upgrade to the newest version of 3.3, or better yet, 3.4. Until next time, have a great day.